Tornadoes tend to cause a lot of damage, and with that damage comes a price tag. Today, we'll be taking a look at the 10 costliest US tornadoes. If there are some interesting facts that go along with the tornado, I will include those as well. Starting off the video, we have the 1979 Wichita Falls F4, which took place in Holiday and Wichita Falls, Texas on April 10th, 1979 between 5.50 to 7.00 p.m. Central Standard Time. This tornado had a rating of F4 and had a damage estimate of $400 million in 1979. However, in 2023, it would have been $1.68 billion. Unfortunately, this tornado took 44 lives plus two indirect deaths and injured 1,700 people. The 1979 Wichita Falls F4 would damage 2,095 homes, 1,062 apartments, and 93 mobile homes. Of the 44 lives that were lost in that day, one would pass away from sepsis and another would pass away from tetanus. Coming in at the ninth spot, we have the 2011 Hackleburg Phil Campbell EF5 tornado, which took place in Phil Campbell, Mount Hope, Moltron, Trinity, and Tanner, Oklahoma, on April 27th, 2011, between 3.05 to 5.40 p.m. Central Daylight Time. This tornado got the rating of EF5, with a damage estimate of $1.29 billion in 2011 which in 2023 would be $1.75 billion. Sadly, this tornado would take the lives of 72 people and injure more than 145 people. The 2011 Hackleburg Phil Campbell EF5 tornado damaged at least 75% of Hackleburg and around 4,000 buildings were destroyed. This tornado would throw a Corvette over 641 feet and would severely mangle the car and a storm shelter's concrete roof was torn off the foundation. Coming in in the number 8th spot is the 2020 Nashville EF3 tornado, which took place in Nashville, Mount Juliet, Lebanon, Gordonsville, Tennessee, on March 3rd, 2020, between 12.32 to 1.35 a.m. Central Standard Time. This tornado would get the rating of EF3, with a damage estimate of $1.5 billion in 2020. In 2023, that would be $1.77 billion. This tornado would take the lives of 5 people and injure 220 people. Thankfully, the fatalities were low, but that is still sad. The 2020 Nashville EF3 tornado damaged the former Tennessee State Prison, the Tennessee State University, and numerous buildings. This tornado would also damage more than 90 aircraft when the tornado hit the John C. Toon Airport. The 2020 Nashville EF3 tornado had a similar path to the 1998 Nashville F3 tornado in downtown Nashville. In the number 7th spot, we have the 1999 Bridge Creek Moore F5, which took place in Bridge Creek and Moore, Oklahoma, on May 3rd, 1999, between 6.23 to 7.48 p.m. Central Daylight Time. This tornado would obviously get the F5 rating, with a damage estimate of $1.2 billion in 1999. However, in 2023, that would be $1.83 billion. The 1999 Bridge Creek Moore F5 tornado would sadly take the lives of 36 people and injure 583 people. It would damage 8,132 homes, 1,041 apartments, 260 businesses, 11 public buildings, and 7 churches. The 1999 Bridge Creek Moore F5 tornado would gain the title of the tornado with the highest wind speeds of 321 miles per hour. It was also the costliest tornado until the 2011 Tuscaloosa Birmingham EF4 tornado. Coming in at number 6, we have the 2019 North Dallas Richardson EF3 tornado, which took place in North Dallas County and Richardson, Texas on October 20th, 2019 between 8.58 to 9.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. This tornado would get the rating of EF3 with a damage estimate of $1.55 billion in 2019. In 2023, that would be $1.85 billion. Thankfully, this tornado had zero fatalities, but four people were injured. The 2019 North Dallas Richardson EF3 tornado would heavily damage the Cary Middle School and Thomas Jefferson High School and several homes and businesses. In the morning, around 242,000 people were without power and six schools had to be cancelled. Duh. 
Alrighty, coming in at number 5, we have the 1970 Lubbock F5, which took place in Lubbock, Texas on May 11th, 1970, between 9.35 to 10.05 p.m. Central Daylight Time. This tornado would get the rating of F5 with a damage estimate of $250 million in 1970. In 2023, that would be $1.96 billion. The 1970 Lubbock F5 would either damage or destroy 8,800 homes, 600 apartments, and 250 businesses. The 1970 Lubbock F5 tornado would get the rating of F6 for a very short time before the F6 rating was dropped and was downgraded to an F5 tornado. Alrighty, coming in at number 4, we have the 1966 Topeka F5 tornado which took place in Topeka, Kansas on June 8, 1966 between 6.55 to 7.29 p.m. Central Time. This tornado would get the rating of F5 with a damage estimate of $250 million in 1966. In 2023, that would be $2.35 billion. This tornado would take the lives of 16 people and injure 450 people. The 1966 Topeka F5 tornado would destroy 820 homes and 250 businesses. This tornado would also damage 3,000 homes and 2,390 businesses. Rick Douglas, a reporter for radio station WREN, now KYYS, tried seeking shelter under an overpass when he was picked up by the tornado and was airborne for a few seconds before being dropped one block away from the overpass. His body would be found with dirt and debris covering his face. When he was taken to a nearby hospital, a nurse put a cover over his face believing that he was dead. In an interview with History Channel's Wrath of God, Rick stated that he would then throw the cover off his face, causing a wincing reaction for the nurse. He stated that over several years, he would find bits of debris still left in his body. He also stated that he was left with a smell that he described as a mix of blood, guts, wood, and metal for several weeks after the 1966 Topeka F5 tornado. Alrighty, coming in at number 3, we have the 2013 Moore EF5 tornado, which took place in Moore, Oklahoma on May 20th, 2013 between 2.56 to 3.35 p.m. Central Daylight Time. This tornado would get the rating of EF5 with a damage estimate of $2 billion in 2013. In 2023, that would be $2.62 billion. Sadly, this tornado would take the lives of 24 people plus one indirect death and injure 212 people. The 2013 Moore EF5 tornado would damage 1,150 homes, two public schools, and the Moore Medical Center. This tornado is the last recorded EF5 tornado. That means we haven't seen one for over 10 years. There is sadly one indirect death which was a 90 year old woman who suffered a skull fracture who would sadly pass away from her injuries on August 1st, 2013. In the second spot we have the 2011 Tuscaloosa Birmingham EF4 tornado which took place in Tuscaloosa and Birmingham, Alabama on April 27th, 2011 between 4.43 to 6.14 p.m. Central Daylight Time. This tornado would get the rating of EF4 with a damage estimate of $2.45 billion in 2011. In 2023, that would be $3.32 billion. Sadly, this tornado would take the lives of 64 people plus 8 indirect deaths and would injure more than 1,500 people. The 2011 Tuscaloosa Birmingham EF4 tornado would damage several buildings, including the Tuscaloosa County Emergency Operations Center. The rating of the 2011 Tuscaloosa Birmingham EF4 tornado is highly controversial due to some survey teams stating that the tornado had dealt EF5 damage, while others say that it did not deal EF5 damage. The buildings that were swept away by the tornado were either not properly anchored, lacked interior walls, or were surrounded by contextual damage not consistent with winds exceeding 200 miles per hour. As a shock to nobody, coming in at number 1 we have the 2011 Joplin EF5 tornado, which took place in Joplin, Missouri on May 22, 2011 between 5.34 to 6.20 p.m. Central Daylight Time. This tornado would get a rating of EF5 with a damage estimate of $2.80 billion in 2011. In 2023, that would be $3.79 billion. Sadly, this tornado would take the lives of 158 people plus 8 to 10 indirect deaths and at least 1,150 injured. The 2011 Joplin EF5 tornado would damage 7,964 buildings including the Mercy Hospital, which was formerly known as the St. John's Regional Medical Center. 
Like I said, there were between 8 to 10 indirect deaths that includes one police officer that was struck by lightning and died one day after the tornado during the recovery and cleanup process. Five people would pass away due to an outbreak of mucormycosis, otherwise known as black fungus. And on June 1st, four more people would sadly join the death count. $2.8 billion is a lot of money, and I hope we never see a tornado go past that price tag. Thank you guys for getting us to 5,000 subscribers. I couldn't have done it without you guys. I'll try to get out a video every two weeks. Thank you again, and until next time, take care, my friends.